Well, some experts believe the federal government will fail to meet their target of 82% renewables by 2030. The Clean Energy Investor Group says a slower than expected rollout of both big renewable energy and electricity transmission upgrades will be behind the failed effort. They say the country's coal power stations may need to stay online longer to ensure energy needs are met. Well, joining me live is Jasmine Diab, Managing Director of Global Nuclear Security Partners. So Jasmine, it is great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, let's talk nuclear because this is certainly a debate going on and it will be for quite a while, no doubt. But what's your take on this? Because you've got a lot of expertise on nuclear. There's been a lot of information, perhaps some would say misinformation. Let's start with the not in my backyard situation. Um, would you, for example, have a nuclear reactor in your backyard? Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to have access to clean, reliable energy 24-7, 365, uh, and being a nuclear professional, understanding how the technology has built intrinsic safety systems and just how uh, reliable it can be is something that I'd be quite happy to have a reactor, whether it's large scale, small modular reactor, or if I lived out in the country having a micro reactor. Um, yeah, definitely have one. That'd be a lot of fun. We're hearing from some governments that perhaps having nuclear reactors in Australia is too expensive. What would you say to that? Yeah, so um, when we talk about nuclear, the capital upfront costs are more expensive than a lot of other energy sources. And that is because a lot of the times you are trying to rebuild a nuclear supply chain and system to be able to build that. Where you get the real cost benefit in nuclear is in its long operational costs. So a nuclear power reactor is due to last 60 to 80 years and over that time, your operational costs are minimal. So we're talking uh, big upfront capital costs with a really long, um, low operational costs, making it viable in the long term. And if we want to look at energy security, energy stability for generations rather than for an election cycle, then nuclear is a really great technology to invest into and look into for a country. Now, you've told me that you're very much in favour of renewables as well, but you would like to see potentially nuclear in the mix. We're also hearing that the talk on nuclear is a distraction and some people saying let's lift the ban so then we can actually just look at the process. If the bans were to be lifted, what would that process look like? So um, lifting the ban is as simple as government having a bipartisan approach here and understanding that the legislation just needs to open up to a nuclear discussion. That will allow us to do two really important things, I think. The first one is to make sure that our nuclear safety, security and safeguards regulations are suitable for civil nuclear power. And that will require resourcing our current regulators to be able to deal with that kind of um, work. What can happen in parallel is decent feasibility studies that look at things like our workforce, look at our land suitability, access to water, and what types of systems would be suitable in Australia and would it be economically viable? Uh, because there is a legislative ban at the moment, a lot of the organisations we need to do this analysis are just hamstrung and can't look into it because they do work for government and, they, and because it's banned, you're not going to look into something that's illegal. Really taking the time to do that feasibility study will allow us to understand, do we want large-scale reactors? Are small modular reactors a better solution for us? And if that's the decision, what fleet of reactors would we look at and where would they be located so that we can get the cost benefit in having a fleet of same type of reactors for the longevity of the reactor, as well as the maintenance, uh, logistic chain uh, and workforce? Um, recently, the Prime Minister tweeted a picture which will show our viewers on screen and there's a number of places that he's put there on his post. What would you say to this tweet? Well, I think it's a bit premature to determine what sites would be sites for nuclear reactors. Like I said before, because it's had a legislative ban for so long, 
a decent feasibility study hasn't been able to be achieved. But a lot of imagery you see out of Diablo Canyon in California has some spectacular environmental scenery with walkers swimming right next to the power plant there in Diablo Canyon. So I think the the um, perception that a nuclear power plant is a big, uncle, ugly thing that will ruin the environment is actually a bit misleading because uh, the land usage a nuclear power plant takes is significantly smaller than a lot of other energy sources. And so environmental impact on land use is actually a lot smaller. Uh, and I think that we need to be able to look at all of these in context and not uh, develop either fear mongering that these power plants are going to be in some of the heart of our tourism or food uh, centres, because that's unrealistic. We're not going to put a small modular reactor in the centre of the Sydney CBD or in the middle of the Barossa Valley. Uh, it's, it's an unrealistic expectation. We've run out of time, but just quickly, you're also the president of Women in Nuclear. What are we seeing in regards to the interest of nuclear with women? So excitingly, there are a lot of young girls and women who are curious about careers in nuclear, which is really, really exciting. Uh, historically, the nuclear industry globally has had very poor representation from women. And so Women in Nuclear Australia has been investing a lot of time and effort to try and get young girls and women interested in a career because it is a fabulous career. You get to see the world and you get mentally challenged uh, with the kind of work we do. And so that's been really exciting to see. Jasmine Diab, always great to see you. Thank you very much for your time and expertise.